have you noticed that there are a lot of employers who are looking for test automation experience? And are you one of those people who would like to learn how to write a test automation, but you're scared? Maybe you consider yourself non-technical. In this video, I want to talk about how I learned how to write test automation as a non-technical person. The first thing I did was that I regularly set aside times to study. I did this for about an hour, four to six times a week. I'll be honest, this was before we had children, so I had a lot more time in my hands. The second thing that I did is that I set weekly and monthly goals. Now, these goals were both in the form of what I had hoped to achieve by the end of the week or the end of the month, but also on me being consistent. So instead of being like, uh, I hope I have finished this course, it'd be a bit more specific and I'd say, I plan to do uh, these chapters in this course, for example. I found it very satisfying to see progress being made. And I set both weekly and monthly goals because I wanted to be consistent, hence the weekly goals. But then I understood that some weeks were busier than others, or if I got sick, then sometimes a week really didn't go well. And then I had the monthly goals to help keep me on track. The third thing was to pick a programming language and a test automation framework. I opted for Selenium WebDriver uh, in Java. The main reason I did this was because I found that the resources that I found online or at the time uh, were the best ones, at least that I could find. So instead of um, overthinking it, I decided to opt for something which, which I could find resources that would teach me well. I then learned First, the programming language. I didn't want to take on too much at once by trying to learn test automation and how to code. Uh, so I first learned Java. I did this mainly with Code Academy and a bit of YouTube. Uh, but nowadays, there are some great free courses on Test Automation University. And I believe there are some on Udemy as well. I speak highly of the ones in Test Automation University. I'll link to you the ones that I would recommend if you were to uh, learn test automation um, because I have personally done them. Lastly, I learned how to write test automation. When I say this, I mean I learned what to automate, what not to automate, why, how to actually write the test, how to set up a framework. I did this by reading blogs and watching YouTube videos. I got to admit, I was too cheap to pay for, uh, for online courses. I practiced on test websites. I'll provide a link below to some test websites you can practice on. I remember that there were quite a few repos online that you could look at to see what a test automation framework looks like. And these are very useful in helping guide you in the right direction. Often in, in courses, you'll also get to have a look at some test automation frameworks. Now, I'd like to share some tips that helped me when learning test automation, especially from the perspective of someone who doesn't have a technical background. The first thing is to be patient with yourself. I remember that there were some evenings where I was so frustrated. I would spend an hour or more honestly getting nowhere. I'd be uh, trying to uh, watch a YouTube video and I'd keep pausing and then going back and then pausing, going back and not figuring out how they got from A to B. And I was, I, I'd, often I'd feel like giving up, I'll be honest with you. I hated the fact that I started my evening thinking I get to a certain point and I even thought I had pretty low expectations. And then by the end of the evening where I was exhausted and tired, I was nowhere near to where I had hoped to achieve. The second thing I would advise people is to be aware of tunnel vision. Now, it's similar to my previous point, but when you start to get frustrated, you develop this tunnel vision and you, and you can't see things so clearly and you ignore like what's around you and it means that when you're stuck it really is difficult to get unstuck it can take a while to realize this is happening i found what helped me was to step away from the keyboard 
uh, try and do something else and then come back or even just pack it for the evening and try another time if you have the luxury of having more free evenings in the week. Get an accountability buddy. That's another piece of advice I'd like to share. I find that learning with someone is very helpful because you have someone to bounce ideas off. And also, if you set a time or like say you have a weekly goal together with someone saying, hey, by the end of this week, we would have done chapters two and three on this online course. Then if you don't do that, you kind of feel like you're letting someone down. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I'm... I, I let myself down sometimes, I, and I don't like it when I do that, but I'm a lot less likely to let someone else down. Lastly, I would say you should find out what works for you. There are heaps of resources online, and there'll be some resources that you may find are highly recommended, but they're not really your cup of tea. Maybe the teaching style, maybe the communication style, whatever. You just find that it's not really working for you. So give it a good go see if it is your cup of tea and then try something else if it's not. My advice and what worked for me when learning test automation as a non-technical person is what worked for me. I hope that some things I shared in this video proved to be useful but ultimately you have to find what works for you.